I invite you to hear the words of Holy Scripture taken from the Gospel according to St. John. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the Scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of that vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We come now to the next of our series of words from the cross. Christ's words spoken in his hour of crucifixion, which over time have become our words. After having spoken words of compassion to those who shared in the sordid work of his arrest and crucifixion, and after having spoken words of compassion to his mother and the beloved disciple, Jesus now turns his attention to his own concerns. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was, were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Water. Water to moisten a parched mouth. Water to free a swollen tongue. Water to open a rasping throat that cannot gasp enough air. Water to keep hope alive, to keep alive just a few moments longer. The God whose spirit hovered over the waters of creation, the God who spoke at the beginning of time and called light out of darkness, is the God who hangs thirsting on the cross, barely able to speak. The God who set the waters of this earth and sky in their courses. The God who commanded rain to fall for 40 days and called the waters back is the God who hangs thirsting on the cross. The God who held back the waters of the Red Sea that his people might walk on dry ground to freedom. The God who made water flow from rock that his people might not die of thirst in the wilderness is the God who hangs thirsting on the cross. The God who withheld the rains for three years and sent them forth at the word of the prophet Elijah is the God who hangs thirsting on the cross. And he who turned water into wine at the wedding feast in Cana in Galilee, who became the water of life for the Samaritan woman at the well, who healed the blind man by washing him in the pool at Jerusalem, who offered his own blood sacramentally to quench the thirst of his disciples at the Last Supper. He who is the living water that will never run out, he is the one who hangs thirsting upon the cross. Our Lord's next word from the cross is simple enough. It speaks of a physical reality that is common to all of humanity, the thirst for water. But it also speaks of a spiritual reality that is just as common to us all, the spiritual longing, the spiritual thirst for love. There is no pretense on the cross. There is, this is no drama of just human imagination. This death is all too real. His needs are so incredibly real. The agony that he endures is real. And he endures all of this because he thirsts for us. He thirsts for the reconciliation this death brings to us. He thirsts for a relationship with all of us. And as we stand to one side, at the foot of the cross, and witness his thirst this day, we need only ask ourselves what it is that is holding us back from the relationship that he invites us to have with him. What is keeping you from a full and real loving relationship with God in Jesus Christ? Our Lord Jesus thirsts for you because he loves you and wills that nothing keep you apart from him. And the cross of Calvary is bigger than our mistakes. It's bigger than our regrets. It's bigger than all the secrets that we hold stored away in our hearts. The cross stands above it all. So he thirsts. For water, yes. But above all, for you. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. 
Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.